Hey, 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 everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to this week's edition of Coaching from the Couch. And as you all can see, I am not alone. I am not alone on this live stream this week, you all. I have with me the most amazing, so happy that she is here, award-winning journalist, Kelsey Nicole Nelson. Thank you so much for having me. Honor, honestly, it's an honor to be here. So glad we finally connected to yes. the natives, adding Black Girl Magic to sports. I know it's going to be a fun show, but honestly, so happy to be here to talk the latest and greatest in sports and uh, talk from the couch. What better place to talk sports from? <laughs> listen, listen. When we came up with the idea of coaching from the couch, I promise I didn't think we were going to literally be on a couch <laughs> at home virtually. <laughs> <laughs> in a pandemic, <laughs> we'll, we'll call it being visionary. We'll call it being visionary because I did not know that was going to happen. You knew it was coming. <laughs> All credit because you knew this is how we would be doing interviews. But honestly, it's comfortable. It's fun. And I feel like you can talk sports best when you're in a comfortable mode. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So I'm excited yeah. to speak with you. Listen, Kelsey and I were catching up before we went live. And I said, hey, Kelsey, this is just two homegirls talking DC sports, our favorite teams. This is why Kelsey and I are connected. We're already connected because Kelsey is from here, yeah. Montgomery County, yeah. like she's a Maryland grad, Georgetown grad. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. There you That's go. what makes it authentic, right? That's what makes it authentic. Exactly. Nobody knows the area like we know the area, or area as right. we like to call it, right? The area. Like the and area. Like when you, there's nothing that beats lived experience. I tell people that all the time. When you grow up rooting for a team and then you get to cover them, you truly know the changes, right? Like me and you know when it used to be MCI Center, then Verizon Center, and now Capital One Arena, we're getting used to name changes, right? Like we've been through those changes. We knew what it was. We didn't have a baseball team here, right? Like I remember the Mystics were starting. Like there's so many different things that me and you can speak to from that lived experience that others can't. We remember the Agent Zero era right in Washington like there's so many different things that we can touch on you know we've seen this Wizards team blossom we've seen the Mystics win their first championship like I mean there's so many great things about growing up in the area going to Maryland going to Georgetown that we can touch on so yeah <laughs> listen are y'all excited are y'all hyped because you have two tried and true DC sports fans sitting right here in front of you all and we also covered these teams Kelsey you went down that list Girl, you went down the list. You brought back so many memories and that just, that bulleted list of every single thing that we have been through as DC sports fans. Definitely some highs and some lows, but guess what? We are still here. Isn't this fan base one of the most loyal fan bases out there? Oh my gosh, yes. Look, most powerful city with the most powerful fans, right? And I, and I stay true to that because again, it doesn't matter what we've been through. And going through DC sports, it takes you through a lot. It probably prepares us honestly for relationships because we know what it is to have good and we know what it is to have bad, but we know how to get through it. That's part of being in the DC area. So we've seen the glory days, right? Remember yes. Maryland basketball glory days, right? And even though Maryland, yes. I, I'm saying this right. on if COVID didn't happen, Maryland basketball, I think would have done pretty good last season. But exactly. you know what Toya Paranoia was? We know what it, was, what, what, what it was like when we used to watch Georgetown games, McDonough Arena, hot and sweaty, standing room only, and just seeing the greatness of Georgetown basketball. You know, again, we know the Wizards glory days with the Crown Butler the era, Antoine Jameson era, right? Elena Beard, Coco Miller playing for the Washington Mississippi. Are you going down? Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying, That's we some good memories. <laughs> That's some good memories. Even though we would be sad at times, guess what? We didn't know how, how good it was because sports brings people together. Yeah, it's so true. Like you said, and even like the bullet stays, right? If you really want to date back. You really want to go back. Like, I mean, we, and we have good memories growing up here. Yeah. You know, seeing championships, you know, and now more recently we started to feel that again, but you know, we, we stay true to our team. Just like now, we know the Wizards are kind of going through this hard spot, but we're still rocking our jerseys and we're still rooting for our team, which is why our guy Bradley Bill is leading the guards right now in all-star voting because we stay right. true to our teams. And I think that's what's so special about D being a DC sports fan. I like to put Baltimore in there. I know sometimes they're excluded from the DMV, but being a sports fan in this area, we stay true to our teams because there's nothing like it. And again, who wouldn't want to come to DC and play great sports and be around this great fan base? 
Absolutely. One of the best fan bases out there. Kudos to everybody watching. Really quick, Kelsey, I want you to share because we got a lot to talk about. Just about every single team you went down that list. Yeah. We want to talk about, we want to get to the Mystics, a quick, quick update on the Mystics. Definitely want to talk about the Wizards. We have to talk about the Washington football team and we definitely big weekend. It is Super Bowl week. So we absolutely want to talk about that. But Kelsey, I do want you to share with our viewers, what are you doing now? What's going on with Kelsey? Share a little bit about yourself for our viewers and where they can find you. Of course, I'd be delighted. Well, of course, I just finished my first season with the Washington football team. So now I'm in that off season mode. And let me tell you, it meant so much for me to be a hometown girl, you know, covering a team that I grew up watching. So it kind of shows you when life comes back full circle. So it was great. I was hosting the life and the fit shows and then Washington football on filtered on NBC Sports Washington. And then I'm continuing my show with Fox Sports Radio here called Listen In with k &N. Right before this interview, I just wrapped up an interview with the Miami Dolphins linebacker and then we'll be back Saturday at 2 p.m. with a, a guy that used to play for the Washington football team and Tony McGee so we're doing live stream interviews with that show we have audio versions of the show talk about local people also just dropped the audio version of that show with Mia Killer B Ellis a boxer from Baltimore that's currently wow. defeated. so making sure that we highlight and interview some of the biggest names in sports former athletes uh, players and so much more. I'm teaching um, part-time faculty at Georgetown. So I have two students this year in the capstone program. I wrapped up teaching at the route college intro to radio and podcasting. So basically to say all this stuff, I sit on the board of most valuable kids. Like basically wow. uh, I'm trying to keep busy. And even though it's the off season, yeah. you know, it's still busy getting ready for Super Bowl, WNBA wizards and everything else. So it's been an honor to honestly cover the teams here. You know, I go on shows and talk the latest in sports, but basically trying to keep people up to date with what's happening in DC in terms of the sports scene. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I said we have we got to take a moment to, to get all that out before we get down into it. So you all you heard all the great things that Kelsey is doing you all I hope you all are catching up with her and, and following her. We have to take a moment also to say what's up to the DC sports fans that are watching just a few got to say what's up to joy. We got some great fans watching joy Butler and Mazdaq. These are some of the seawall team members and then part of the seawall family they watch every week wallace west i see you cameron mingo cameron mingo thank you for the shout out to us yes, thank you for national girls and women in sports day yesterday thank you so much we appreciate you so much um kenneth lash and others they're just watching and wallace says i love the fit with kelsey yeah that not, makes not a big he says i'm not a big fashion guy but i enjoyed <laughs> that series a lot Oh, that means a lot. Look, we, we tried something different in Washington. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these athletes, look, we got Russell Westbrook in D.C. So talk about how you can make a fashion statement. It's not going to be a dull moment. There you go. We wanted to highlight who these guys are off the football field because they are more than athletes. And as we know, our fashion plays a large part into who we are. You know, on the bit I talked to Chase Young, you'll appreciate this being from PG County and we talked yes. about the importance of new balances, right? And so if you're from PG County, okay. you'll see that, right? It's a fashion style uh, that we have that's unique to the area. And that's what I love showing you know a lot of this is who the guys are they get to show their background a lot of these guys are dropping clothing lines so it's just great to show that they are more than athletes and so that's why that show was fun and I'm glad that fans you know tried something different and unique with us this season that is so cool <laughs> so super cool so you all make sure if you're not watching the fit yes. Kelsey said <laughs> watch the fit and Wallace said watch the fit and I'm yes. telling you to watch the fit so you can go there we go watch it watch it <laughs> <laughs> So let's get into our favorite sports teams, some of our favorite sports teams, shall we? Because we can't cover all of the DC sports tonight, but we're going to get into a couple. First up, we're going to get into the Mystics, yeah. where we're into, you know, the WNBA um, free agency season. And we have seen a couple of fan favorites leave the team ariel powers tiana hawkins announced today that she has signed a multi-year deal with the atlanta dream um but in turn the wizards have picked up aisha clark um and and, and they're still working through free agencies i, I hated to see ariel go and, and as well as tiana but how do you feel about about that and just welcoming aisha and i'm very excited about aisha by the way I know, like, it's so hard to say goodbye, right? It's it so is. It's hard to let go. I mean, Tiana, especially, is someone I feel like I got so close to this fan base. We talked about Ariel and just what she built 
um, and grew on. But I think the exciting thing about Aisha Clark, I mean, talk about talk about a two-time WNBA champion, right? Coming to a team that now knows championship yes. uh, experience. And I think she's going to bring so much to the game, right? She plays forward. But I think especially what she can add to the Mystics is that defense, that defense that we're so excited sure. to have. Um, in Washington, because look, we got a taste of victory here in Washington. We want to go back to that, right? We got to see how yeah. the championship was. We've still got Elena Deladon, and we want to continue to build on that because we know how great this basketball team is. I think she'll be a breath of fresh air to this Mystics team again. I know it's going to be harder to get used to because if you want to talk yeah. about diehard fans in this area, Washington Mystics fans are some of the most yes, diehard fans, especially those season ticket holders. They stay true to yes. their team. And they truly, truly, truly support that team. And on that point, we want a real parade for our Washington Mystics. We need a real parade. I'm staying true to that. We want a real parade. <laughs> we want a real they one. They deserve it, right? But I think yes. we still have some great pieces that will come. Um, you know, you still have Natasha Cloud. You have Linda Deladon. I think something else that I'm watching is Emma Misaman. Um, I oh, yeah. That she won't come back until after the Olympics. It's like, <sighs> it's like just when things are going good, it's like, great. Right. Now right. She return until later, you have to think about that. But still, I think the squad is solid and our coach we trust. Because uh, if you talk oh, about yes. the job done. But, you know, I'm feeling confident. Again, I think the Mystics, don't fret. Don't fret. We'll be okay. Right. You guys heard it here. <laughs> That's right. And you are right. You know, when the Mystics went on their championship run, one of the things I used to share on the show, and I'm yeah. so glad that you plugged our Washington Mystics fans because they are so... Yes. awesome and dedicated and it's some doggone good basketball being played over at the entertainment and sports arena of course before COVID you know when outside was open but when everything opens back up yes real parade a real parade they absolutely deserve it they are champions and yes. and should absolutely get that parade and you all go out to the entertainment and sports arena yes. it's a great it's vibe it's beautiful. It's easy to get. They make it so easy to get to. And of course, I think we'll both appreciate this, but the fact that they put it in Southeast DC, I think speaks Absolutely. So much. Because talk about a city that used to be Chocolate City and talk about like that last quadrant <laughs> that yes. made us feel we have. I think it's so special and just helping that Southeast economy. So I'm like you, like definitely go check it out again. Great basketball being played there. Please, 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 please go yes. support it. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we got to move on from the mystics to the wizards. Wizards fans, if you're watching, make sure you check in so we can shout you guys out. Kelsey, what a whirlwind it has been yeah. since right before training camp with the news of the, of the trade right. wall for Westbrook. I mean, all the excitement built up to see what John Wall was going to look like when he got back. While he was out, we, we saw Brad just blossom into this unstoppable, you may as well say NBA player. Isn't he just phenomenal, right? And it's like, okay, we can't wait till John gets back with Brad. Right. Then we realize that's never gonna happen again because John gets traded for Westbrook Westbrook comes, we know that Westbrook has been dealing with some injuries. Thomas Bryant goes out for the season with a torn ACL. Davis Bertans hasn't quite gotten into game shape. I agree, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's wonderful and it's as amazing as, as Brad is doing right now. The, our Wizards got the worst record in the league. I know, we've been Woo. struggling. And you know, you talk, talk about an off season to remember, like, you know, John Wall has been that guy for Remember yeah. when he came in, bringing the Dougie to D.C.? We'll yeah. never forget yeah. that. We remember when he stood on that score table and claimed that this yeah. was his city? We have so many great memories of John Wall. He was our wall star. He was the one that we always rode for, making sure people never forgot about mm -hmm. the guard conversation. And then lo and behold, the summer happens. We see that video drop. The next thing we know, John Wall is gone. And, right, and talk about a player that brought so much to the community side of D.C. too. I should have said that with the Mystics. I'm so glad that Clark has already talked about getting, wanting to get involved in activism. John yeah. Wall was such a part of this community. Talk about all the great community service work that he did. So Absolutely. all star on the basketball court and an all star yeah. off the court. And like you said, we, we were waiting for him to come back from injury. We were like, all right, everybody else can doubt him, but we know John Wall is going to be back and get back with his bro, right? The bromance that he has with Bradley Bill. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, he's gone, right? I think for a while we saw Bradley Bill asking Bradley Bill I feel like has been one that has never got the national attention that he deserves until this season. 
finally people are giving him that attention. But for a long time, he said, hey, I'm a leader of this team too. And lo and behold, when that trade happened, Brad was immediately forced into a leadership role. But then lo and behold, we got Russell Westbrook, a guy that's proven on paper, another all-star that we were just excited about. Because, you know, if you're going to lose John, maybe the next best thing you can get is Russell Westbrook. Because again, another proven player, but we wanted to see how he would mesh with Bradley Bill, because you talk about two guys that obviously love to shoot basketball. Yep. Lo and behold, you talk about Russell Westbrook's injury. Ah, uh, wait, that's not the Russell Westbrook that we were expecting. That's not the same, that's not the same one. Right, we're like, ah, uh, what, what, what happened? Like, no, something, is there a mix up? And then you, know, you said the, miss, the Wizards uh, record. Like, who would have thought at the beginning of the season that they would be last, right? That, like them and the Timberwolves, right? That <laughs> we would be last right. competing. Right. And then, you know, you get sparks of, of happiness. You know, I can go back to the Nets wins, like especially that last game and just wow, 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 beating the Brooklyn Nets. But still, we have so many questions. This team is still trying to get it together. The, Thomas, the loss of Thomas Bryant, who was having a great season to start, I think hurt us so much. But yeah. look, Wizards fans, if anybody knows how to go through a range of emotions, it's Wizards fans. And, you know, then, on top of that, now we have people speculating Bradley Bill trade rumors. Like, okay. there's basically just a lot going on. People are questioning head coach uh, Scott Brooks. They're questioning his rotations. And then on the other side of things, too, something we haven't talked about, they're questioning the defense, right? We're like, all oh, right, right. we got to play defense. Bradley Bill was like, hey, we can't guard a parked car. So it's like <laughs> so many things going on right now. But I think, you know, that uh, the win they had against the Miami Heat was a glimmer of hope and promise. And you just told me, again, this is a young team, right? Rui Hachimura played well, you know, was yep. going to be out. But, like, yeah. Bradley is leading this young team. Russell Westbrook is getting back into his groove, right? Mm -hmm. Because, again, we're trying to make sure he's 100% from that quad injury. But it's growing pains. It's rebuild yeah. pains, right? We didn't expect it to be like this. But, again, it's a brand new system that we're trying to embrace in DC. I will say, I love how we've all become Russell Westbrook stands. Now we support him like one of our own. We will defend him and die for him and do everything like that. But again, Bradley is finally getting the attention that he deserves mm -hmm. in the NBA and score and giving his all on the yes. basketball court. I think trying to make the guys around him better. We love Bradley Bill's stats, but we would love to see more Wizards wins, right? Because basketball you definitely is got to see the wins yeah. along with the stats. I want to go back to your point and Russell Westbrook, if you're watching, yes, we are Westbrook's fans. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Those press conferences, whenever he's on the screen, I'm like, oh, everybody be quiet. <laughs> it's Russell time, right? It's like, that's how we feel about him. We'll defend him. And it's even great to see that people are still voting for him for All-Star. Like, we are riding right. for you, Russell Westbrook. Right. I had to look at that. That was like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> that's the level of respect that he has. I mean, that's, that is his reputation across the league with fans he's earned that respect that even when he's off people are like but that's brody yeah that but that's russell westbrook you're talking about and doesn't he just demand that respect as well when he's on the court when he's with the team he brings such energy and wallace and cameron and others on the on the on the chat were mentioning and you just mentioned it as well that game on sunday the nets game Six points in, in, in seven seconds, Brad three, Russell, Russell Brooks three. three. That's like Russell <laughs> three hasn't made a three. When I saw him shoot it, I said, oh, help us. And you I, know- I went crazy, like I went crazy. And that's what I missed <laughs> the most. I'm like, this is when we needed to be in the arena going crazy, you know, Exactly. I even missed the free Chick-fil-A sandwiches at the end of the games. Like- Yeah, I'm we gotta get back, <laughs> we gotta get back in the building. We have got to get back in the building. I absolutely do. To spoil KD's homecoming, Jeff Green's homecoming, I'm sorry, but like, look, this is our city, our town. You're not going to come here and beat the Washington Wizards. And then to see the Wizards getting loved, they're replaying the game. Like, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. The game gave us, us fans hope again. So like, this is the Wizards team that we were expecting when Russell right. West came to D.C., and that's why I thought that game was so much fun. Of course, it was high scoring, so, okay, we can question the defense, but I'm not going to be still celebrating that huge win, and I think that instilled confidence. Right. Talk about Russell Westbrook. Remember also, when he came, he talked about how Russell Westbrook makes everybody around him better. Remember yep. talking about how, how, how great it was to have Russell Westbrook come to mm -hmm. practice earlier than everyone else, showing his work ethic. Right his commitment it didn't matter that he was a veteran if you're playing on the court with russell westbrook he's not afraid to tell you something right so you're not gonna that. all right russell say whatever it is that he has to say 
and you gotta be you gotta tread real lightly when it's like make sure when you, the whatever question you're gonna ask make sure it's a good one make sure it's a really really good one and insightful one we have a couple one question i, I want to make sure we try to get answered because you did mention the defense and that's been a, a topic we see that that the team is lacking Russ asks, Russ is one of our Seawall family members and he watches, will they bring in a defensive coach to help out? We would like for them to, you yeah. know, I think that that is something that would help because currently it's so offensive based. Right. And so it's, Brooks is heavy on the offense. Right. And we need defense. Look, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a person that believes defense does win championships. Because again, when the Wizards are their best, you need players that can play on both sides of the basketball like the reason we love MJ right is not only because he was an offensive scoring weapon MJ also brought it to you on the defensive side of the yep exactly. a lot of a lot of the a lot of the stars get a lot of flack for not playing defense i.e James Harden right that's something that's plagued him his entire right well, the whole thing if the Wizards play defense you really have a chance to be competitive and that's the great thing about being in the NBA you don't always have to be a scorer you can a top defender and help your team wins games. Everybody has a certain role to play on that basketball team. But I do think that's a question why many are looking at that leadership and Scott Brooks and saying, is this the right piece to make this team go far? So I think if the defense doesn't change soon, and look, Wizards fans, we have high expectations in DC. High expectations. Hey, uh, Kelsey, something's got to change. And, and you know, usually when something's got to change, you usually, you usually look at the top, right? And yep. that's and so I agree we just need to do something because again we don't we can't have I mean I thought about that Nets game and how high scoring it was going into the fourth quarter I was like man this is really going to be a high scoring game you know? yeah I was like are they going to score 150 points and they almost did <laughs> like this is this is what I was you know what a terrible defensive effort but someone had to win at least it was the Wizards <laughs> so, it just remains to be seen as you said we have a lot of high expectations as Wizards fans but I think it's because we've gone through so many years, decades. It's not even <laughs> decades without a championship. So you have to go back think about the glory days were the bullets days. There's people yeah. who remember that. Yeah, I really think since they were the bullets. Oh, just think about that. Like we want it and we and you talked about this before the show, but you know, DC we're mm -hmm. moving ourselves the district of champions, right? We saw the yep. do it. We saw the Mystics do it. We saw the Capitals do it recently. So it's like a hello basketball team. Hello football. Absolutely. <laughs> if and, you know, now, since the Washington football team is the Washington football team, then I end up calling the Wizards the Washington basketball team. Cause it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I have to, it's, 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 it's funny, but <laughs> they are the Wizards. You bring up that point, I, I, I think people forget this, but remember the fans picked the Wizards name, right? And that's kind of the process that we're going through with the Washington football team now is that they're having fans submit names. So, hope, you know, I mean, we don't, they might be the Washington football team longer. We just don't know. But of course we know, we want a name for that team. And I think, you know, that spoke value for the fans to be able to pick the Wizards name. I loved how the GoGo, the G League team picked the GoGo name, paying homage to DC. Yep, they did. So I just hope the Washington football team honestly picked something that pays tribute to DC, that stays true. So let's move right on to the Washington football team. And while we're still talking, because guess what, you guys, we still haven't gotten to Super Bowl predictions. I haven't got there yet. But I do want to hear, because we were talking about this a while ago about, and we're not going to get into names per se, but while Kelsey and I are chatting and while you all are still commenting in, in, the, in the comment section in the show, make sure, what are your favorite names? I want to hear what your favorite names are. Then we're going to go back and look at some of those names. Oh. But switching to the Washington football team. I think I want to start off by saying, wow. Yes. Right? What, 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 what did we really watch last season? You know, that's what it's like. What, what really happened? I keep going back to um, new head coach in Ron Rivera. We know he's totally done an overhaul in the front office. Um, Martin Mayhew, Marty, um, I keep saying Marty's name, Marty Herney, um, Doug Williams promoted to senior advisor to Jason Wright, Eric Stokes promoted, um, Jennifer King, Jennifer King, first African-American woman to full-time coach in the NFL, um, huge first. Um, we're just seeing culture change all around. And I think when you start talking about this team, Ron Rivera and a head coach who battled cancer, did not miss a game while he was battling cancer, a team that went through 
one, two, three, four quarterbacks. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it always say wide receivers who who no one has heard of, tight ends who no one largely most of the offense no one has really heard of and, and is checking for. Um, they still made the playoffs, and I and I remember the moment when. Ron Rivera made the decision to bench Dwayne Haskins. And he said, he took a look around the division and said, I think we got a chance. I think we got a chance to go for it. So we're going to go for it. And I remember saying to myself, Ron Rivera is crazy. Like there is no way. What is he? Like, is he, is he for real? Is he for real? Like this, the season is long. But at the time, you know, I think at the time when he made the decision, I don't think Dak, Dak may have been hurt at that time. But, um, you know, you just know teams get better over time. And I was thinking, wow, that's a lot of faith that he has in this team and just on his and his coaching staff ability to coach them up. Because nothing that they did, when you really look back at some of those games, Kelsey, nothing, nothing they did was really sexy. There wasn't like a whole lot of creative playmaking. It wasn't all that. It was just player development. Let's just go out here and will ourselves to win. And I'm going to make you believe that you can win because you actually can beat the folks on the other side of the line. So in summary, how, what did you think about this last Washington football team season? Let me tell you, like, if someone could tell me that, one, I would join the Washington football team, and then, two, that same year they become NFC East champions, uh, pinch me, like, what? A team that had went 3-13 and before? A team that has for a long time been saying, we need something, we need some type of spark. And, you know, and you will know this, you know, with Kirk Cousins, we tried that experiment, you know. He said, I like that. We all didn't like that, Kirk Cousins goes. Before that, we had RG3 mania. Lo and behold, he gets injured, and that changes the course of history for right. the football team. And so, lo and behold, we got a guy that has some uh, ties to my county, Montgomery County, come in, Dwayne Haskins, get drafted here. Let me tell you, we love our own. That's why we love Chase Young, right? Anybody yeah. from the DV, when you play here, we will show you a special type of love because there's no place like it here. And again, we're family, right? DC is truly family. This season was everything. And then talk about a team that had to overcome so much adversity. You know, we had the, the allegations, right, that came out. Oh, yeah. That. Talk about trying to change that culture. You see Julie Donaldson hired, having the first woman in the NFL broadcast, mm -hmm. right, who happens to be my boss. And then, lo and behold, we have Jason Wright come in, the first black team president in National Football League history. I mean, it's like... You can't make this stuff up. And then it's like, you know, Ron Rivera, when things are kind of going good, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. right? Cancer, right? And the last cancer scares a lot of us, right? Because cancer has impacted a lot of our families. And we saw the recovery of Alex Smith, right? We saw Project 11. We see Alex Smith on the sidelines really just thinking he'll be more in an advisory role, right? Helping our young quarterbacks. And lo and behold, next thing we know, he's thrown us the football game. I still remember when Dwayne Haskins got benched after that Ravens game, you know, have Kyle Allen come in, mm -hmm. had Alex Smith come in, see Alex Smith, you know, not be fully there because we know he's still overcoming that injury. And then lo and behold, we have to play Tom Brady of all teams in the playoffs. Like, come oh, on, but then lo and behold, that game, and then we have a guy, Taylor Heineke, come in, a guy that no one had really heard of, a guy that, I mean, it's like, you can't make this stuff up, a guy that was with college kids just a couple of weeks before taking online classes, and his biggest, his biggest concern was getting that engineering degree, and now he's about to face off against the GOAT, and let me tell you, we gave a good game to Tom Brady, that defense showed up, and offensive-wise, I mean, there was a couple of teams, Tom Brady almost had his legacy blemish if the Washington football team had won that game, but again, to get there, and we know what the NFC East went through and what the Washington football team went through. I remember that game against Philadelphia. Then you kind of go in that middle stretch. But they turned yep. this team around. A very young team. Let me tell you, when I'm interviewing these guys, I have to remind myself I'm older than most of the team. And I don't think I'm that old, but that's how young and hungry this team don't is. Tell, don't tell – Kelsey, don't tell you nothing. That's I'm old. Saying. You just go <laughs> in there and you just – nobody's asking. So you don't, but you do have to remind yourself and you, and you have to remember when you reference certain things, like you went down the list of everything. Some of these guys weren't even born when we were going to these establishments. Look, I, I, I feel that sometimes I'm like, geez, you're realize you're old. And I'll tell you, when I'm asking these guys about what they do off the football field, I'll tell myself I'm old when they start to say, I'm like, what's your favorite art and music artist? And I say, these rappers I've never heard of. So when I say the guys keep me young, they keep me young. They keep me on <laughs> keep me trendy. And hopefully 
somewhat cool. But again, this football team did what nobody thought they could, right? The NFC became the laughing stock of the entire of the entire football league. Yeah. I said before the season, I thought it was the Eagles division to win or lose, right? All eyes were on Philly. We thought Carson Wentz would be the straight quarterback. Lo and behold, we saw the season that Carson Wentz had. You know, Dak is out with the Cowboys. Andy Dalton, they're okay. Andy Dalton has some experience. But lo and behold, the Washington, and then the Giants, you know, they're the Giants. We weren't expecting much of the Giants. But lo and behold, right. the Washington football team came out on top and made the world notice their name. Chase Young made sure everybody knows yes. Cameron Curl. I mean, there's so many people you can point to. But now people are taking the Washington football team seriously, which is exciting. Because for Washington, for a while, we've had to look across the beltway and look at the Ravens if we want the Ravens best. But now we're all right. We're looking at ourselves in D.C. and saying, you know what? We can be competitive and we have a chance to be competitive once again in the NFC. So just what a spectacular season. Listen, one of you, you mentioned Julie Donaldson and we have to, we have to shout out Julie. That is your boss. So we have to shoot out John, shoot, um, shout out to Julie because that's Kelsey's boss and we would say hello to her anyway. But let me tell you something. When you made a comment about the Washington football team and then we're going to move on to the Super Bowl. What, what I really loved those videos, those hype videos. So the, no, they got you. You all are doing an amazing job with these hype videos over there, up, up, up there. Mm -hmm. it, I'm telling you, the social media content is on point. And in one of those, in one of those videos, you know, it was like the team doesn't even have a name. You know, what is your identity? And then you hear Ron Rivera's voice in the background. He was like, We're the Washington football team. I know that. Like, That's right, Coach Rivera. That's <laughs> we <a> bad <laughs> name. You're okay. right. <laughs> even the last one they did with Wale. I love that. Especially oh, yeah, the Wale video was dope in the background like does it get more DC than that and that's what I love this team really embracing the identity of the football team yeah you look at someone like me who was brought in it was really to make sure that we could connect with the football fan right make sure right. we have give them more options and then really be transparent because I think for a while now when the team wasn't doing as well people wanted transparency they wanted to feel connected and I think that's why we're going through this process together and again I think that's why we are the Washington football team now but as we get together to pick a name it's going to be exciting there's this something you'll always remember I get we used to be the Washington Redskins right but now we're going through a new dynamic guess what this is still our team and I'll tell you, D.C. is a football town. I say to people all the time, we love our football team, good or bad, we ride for our football team. So it's just been incredible to be a part oh, of it. Oh, listen, we talked about at the beginning of the show when the Caps won, you know, the Stanley Cup, when the Nats won, you know, the World Series, when the Mystics won the WNBA championship. We can't wait for the Wizards to get back there, the NBA championship, but let me just say, and ever the football team <laughs> with gonna, another Super Bowl, they just need to shut the city down for like a week. It's gonna be crazy. Like, it's gonna be like Super Bowl week, but yeah, no, seriously though, I'm not. I'm be, yeah, they need to shut it down. They need to shut it on down. I'm not. I'm. I mean, I'm gonna be out there. I'm sure everyone watching will be out there, and I, you know, I know you'll be out there, Kelsey. Because we love that team. That's like a gold time. This is a football town. Remember, Washington has a long storied history here. So to come here, yes. remember the games at RFK Stadium, to talk with these greats that play for the football team, yes. storied and has won championships. We want to get back to that level. Because remember, we have a whole new generation of Washingtonians, of people. Got a coming whole to new generation. I don't know what it is to, to see this team experience. They don't know. And I actually, you know, it's interesting because, and I keep saying we got to move on, but this conversation is good because I keep saying, you know, we talk about the, you know, uh, our, the historic fans who know the Super Bowl years, who felt and know what a championship, a Super Bowl, you know, just presence feels like mm -hmm. and having the, the Lombardi trophy raised with your team being the one raising it. But these new fans, I got to give them a shout out. <laughs> I have to give a shout out to the fans that have never experienced that because they're die hard. They are just as die hard as we are because they don't even know what that looks like. They don't even know what that is. The, know, they here, they with us. Right? They just don't know what that looks yeah. like for us. And I think that's why, and that's why I'm so excited. Part of the reason why I'm excited for my show this Saturday with Tony McGee is to relive those experiences, right? Like you said, because there's new people coming in that just don't know it. But I think that's what's so exciting about this team. You know, before yep. you say the team can go to the Super Bowl, but they were just saying it to say it. People really believe now that with this team, young, healthy team, especially yep. in the 
side of the football and then offensive wise we're building because shout out to Logan Thomas shout out to Terry McLaurin like you know that just we're really solid pieces of that offense if we get a quarterback that's solid and can get through the full season watch out for the Washington football team remember I said it here because all the pieces are there we're just gonna glue. listen oh they need a quarterback and we're going to speak right now. This is why we got to move because we're definitely on time now. But this was some good conversation, great conversation. And we got to mention that one of who might be, at least in my book, the greatest quarterback of all time in our era, at least. And then we got a, a, a baby, potentially greatest of all time upcoming. So we got Tom Brady, who the Washington football team played and and. For a slight second there, we all thought they were going to upset, but they did not. So it is kind of, you know, hey, they were playing a Super Bowl contender. Playing in the Super Bowl this weekend, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Kansas City Chiefs. What an awesome story for both teams. Tom Brady, I never thought I would see. 2020 was just filled, filled with a bunch of, I never thought I'd see it. And Tom Brady no longer being a member of the New England Patriots was one of those things. So to see him go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and, and, and really lead this team on the field. Now they have an amazing coaching staff. Shout out to Byron Leftwich, who is from here. Shout out to Todd Bowles, a former Washington football team member. All of those things. They got an amazing coaching staff. All black coordinators. All, all black coordinators. They out there rocking out down there. Everything's happening for the Buccaneers. Exactly. So you got that storyline. And then you have Kansas City. Back-to-back -back championships. That is very difficult to do. I know everyone knows that. And they did it. They did it, right? And it's like, I'm going to tell you, Kelsey, I'm going to be like a kid in the candy store. And I also want to say thanks for nothing, COVID, because Kelsey and I should be in Tampa right now. Look. <laughs> Yeah, so, right so heartbreaking to not be at that Super Bowl because I remember last year in Miami we're like see you in Tampa we can't wait till Tampa and then we get the storyline they can never make up till two of the greatest quarterbacks got to play right now because you have Patrick Mahomes and just the infancy of his greatness and then Tom Brady at 43 doing it COVID messed it up now we're working from home and not in Tampa so let me tell you that was heartbreaking because we should be it was it was it was Oh, we should be. And I'm going to go back to a comment I see that was in the chat from Russ, which was you need a really good quarterback to win in today's NFL. And we are seeing on Sunday two awesome quarterbacks, one who has stamped his place in football history and the other who is absolutely making a case for his future. And Kansas City has already invested their money in him. Uh -uh. He's staying. He's with us. He's staying yeah. with us for the remainder of his career. I mean, I, I'm gonna tell you, I don't really know what to expect on Sunday. I'm, I know it's gonna be a great game. I think what I'm most looking forward to is the coaching staffs. I think this is gonna be, like you mentioned, the coordinators were on Tampa Bay and Andy Reid and his staff and their creativity. I think whoever whoever coaches the, the uh, whoever brings their heart, they some because somebody's got to lose, y'all. Somebody has to lose. Unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, <laughs> someone has to lose this game, and whomever outsmarts the other one from a playmaking perspective, that's where we're going with because both teams can make big plays when it counts. It's true. Look, we got Andy Reid on one end who we cannot doubt Andy Reid, a player's coach. Everyone speaks up mm -hmm. about him. He proved that job last year. We were so excited to see him get that Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes and just the relationship that they have. And then on the offensive side of the football, one that we are never going to let uh, stop talking about his greatness and Eric Bieniemy, right? Like just yes. special with that Kansas City Chiefs team. When you look at that, that team, right? Travis Kelsey, Terry Hill, like just such a special, special, special team. And I love that you touch on the coaching aspect. But on the other end, you have Bruce Arians, right? No risk and no biscuit offense. And mm -hmm. He has top bowls on that defensive side. It's just, it's going to be a fun game. I have a fun. boring because again, we have, I think it's going to be a shootout. And that's what we want in the Super Bowl. Because, you know, I remember that 13 3 Super Bowl uh, in Atlanta. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a Super Bowl. This is what I get. Like, that's yes. why I'm covered. And it, I was like, yes. And that was a, that was a Patriots. That was a, look, that was a Tom Brady production. <laughs> That was that was the Patriots and the Rams. That was a Tom Brady production. But, you know, that defense stepped up. But I agree with you, Kelsey. This is going to be a shootout. 
This is going to be the offenses. They're going to get it going. And now, now both defenses are good. Are That's good. Tampa Bay's, Tampa Bay's Tampa defense. defense. No one thought they would. That defensive Listen. front, like, I mean, they can bring the pressure to Tom Brady. And we know one thing Brady doesn't like. And when he does uncharacteristic things and starts to throw those picks is when pressure is his way. So if Tampa Bay can get to Tom Brady, expect that um, if, we, if, if the Chiefs defense, right, can get right. to that's going to be a huge difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Defense, if they can get to Patrick Mahomes, uh-oh, watch out, because Patrick Mahomes, we're also looking at that toe injury, right? And right. Still back. You know, that causes some discomfort. And when you know you have an injury, you think differently. We yeah, saw that situation back previously, too. And then, lo and behold, the Kansas City Barber decided to uh, give everyone some good shape-ups, but also uh, spread some COVID. So we're like, just oh. geez. What did they say? They said he found out as he was cutting the center's hair that he had tested positive. And I'm like, well, you wasn't you wasn't home quarantine wait, waiting for your results? I don't know. I mean, I know people got to look good for the Super Bowl, but my goodness. You don't look good, but now you got a COVID scare. But like, I mean, if you can pressure the quarterback, right? Because we both know that they can throw. The best thing you can do for both of these quarterbacks is keep them off the football field, right? Especially Patrick Mahomes. He's young. He's hungry. They're trying to run it back. And so if the Tampa Bay defense can get to Patrick Mahomes, this game will be different. Because the biggest thing, if Patrick Mahomes gets that ball to one of his receivers, and we know they like to have yards after the catch, it's going to be trouble for Tampa Bay. But then on the other end, you got to protect Tom Brady because we know if anybody you can't count out, it's Tom Brady, right? Because he does never count him out. This is going to be good. And we're, we're at, look, we're at our time. And it was so funny because when, when Kelsey and I were chatting before this, I said, hey, Kelsey, you know, sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but everybody's going to say, Seawall, listen, Candy, yeah, it's all the time because you like to talk. But sometimes we go over 30 minutes. We go over and we're, and we're over. <laughs> we're going at 45 and that's with no breaks no commercial or anything we just out here talking sports listen kelsey it was absolutely amazing thank you so much on the show this was so much fun black girl magic everywhere we're sprinkled. everywhere over in the dc sports fan i love it thanks again so much for having me absolutely absolutely you all thank you all for tuning in everybody Kelsey, remind everybody again, I know you said it at the top of the show, but remind everybody again where they can follow you on social media. Of course, so on Facebook, they can follow my fan page, Kelsey Nicole Nelson, that's regular spelling, not fancy, K-E-L-S-E-Y. On social media, follow me at The Real K Nelson, that's The Real K Nelson on Twitter and Instagram. You can check out all of my updates on my website, KelseyNicoleNelson.com. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you so much again. And to everybody watching, I will see you guys next week.